Hello and good morning to everybody. I hope everybody is well. Welcome to our Remo3 for Clients website. And no doubt very shortly, my co-presenter, Pete Cooney, will bring up the slide where for us. I'm Ronnie Althead, I'm CEO at Incentra. And joining me today and presenting with me today is Peter Cooney, who is Incentra's Global Head of Solutions. We'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Let me quickly take you through the agenda. I'll take you through a bit of introductions, and then Pete will pick it up from there and uh, take you through more detail on Remo3, the use cases, the demonstration, and then of course we'll throw open to questions and see if there's anything that anybody would like to ask. Feel free to type your questions into the chat box at any time. Um, if we can answer them when we're in flow, we certainly will. Pete, if you could hop to the agenda slide for me, please. So today what we're going to cover off is introductions. Tick, we've done that one. You now know who we are. Um, and what we're going to spend time talking about is really the challenge that comes as a result of applications. And applications are the, the root of all evil as it relates to a bunch of different use cases which we're going to take you through. Pete will take you through the Remo overview, product demo, a few different options as to how Remo 3 can be leveraged and used, and then we'll go to Q&A as I suggested. Pete, if we can go to the next slide, please. So let's talk about the challenge, the challenge that exists um, as a consequence of applications, almost all projects, um, whether they be Windows upgrade projects or migration projects to different virtualized environments, or whether it's patching requirements, etc., the app is at the core of the issue. So often as well, it's so hard for us to, you know, some people are still moving to Windows 10, some are already planning Windows 11, and the app is at the core of the problem. So, well, are my apps going to work? Will they work in the new environment? Will they perform the same way? For those who are looking to to upgrade VMware Horizon View or Citrix VDAX environments and they're trying to work out, well, will my apps work? Will it be as performance? Always a drama. Those who are wanting to move to Windows 365 Cloud PC, those who are wanting to move to Azure Virtual Desktop, which we, you know, we previously affectionately knew that as Windows Virtual Desktop. Again, what about my apps? Will my apps work? Will they perform better there? Will they perform better in their current guide? For those organizations who want to go to a zero touch, um, and if someone can mute, I'm just getting a bit of background noise, there we go. Um, if, if organizations want to move to a sort of zero touch concept and leverage autopilot and Intune, well, how do you get your apps out of SCCM and into Intune? Again, the apps are the problem. And then if we move to patching and security, and of course, you know, security is one of the predominant reasons that CIOs will lose their jobs, right? It's breach. Breach is one of the primary reasons, and one of the one of the best preventative measures to being breached is to ensure that everything is patched and up to date. But when it comes to operating system patches, which Microsoft release at least monthly and then roll up into two biannual updates, and at that point it's like, well, yeah, I know I want to roll out the patch, but what will happen to my apps? And for those who have been operating in virtual environments, you know, for a period of time, no doubt you've run into the scenario where you've made a patch update whether it be to the operating system or to the virtual platform itself. And when you used to run 25 users on one host, now you can only run 15. But your testing didn't seem to pick that up because the app installed and the app ran. Just the performance was radically different. So there are all these blockers that exist that stop organizations and create this position of inertia. Where it's like, we really want to do this. We want to modernize. We want to go to S from SCCM to Intune. We want to go to AVD. We want to go to Cloud PC. We want to go to a different version of Citrix, whatever it might be. But my apps are at the, you know, at the core of the problem. So let's look at it in terms of the life cycle of applications. If we think about, you know, what do we need to do from an application perspective if we're doing things with our apps? The first thing is application rationalization. So over time, like anything, like Active Directory, like many things that we have in technology, the applications that are stored in a central repository, let's say SCCM for argument's sake, it starts to become a bit messy. So over the, over the years, you've had you know Office version 11, version 12, version 13, version 16, all of which have been packaged and put into your application delivery mechanism. And I'm just going to keep using SCCM. And then you've got Subversions within there. Well, we've got this package for that particular user group and that package for that user. Well, let's try packaging this. And, and you, as you can imagine, over time, you get application bloat within the application delivery platform. And rationalizing those is often the first thing that needs to happen before any type of modernization. Why embark on a modernization project and modernize apps that you're not using anymore? Modernize apps that, frankly, have no use. 
So who are using those apps? How often are those apps being used? Is there any understanding of groups of people that use different apps? Can they be migrated? Can they all start using fewer apps? Doing that piece of work is actually a really significant body of work if you do it manually. Fortunately for us, we have some automated tools that bolt on before we start leveraging Ringo 3 that enable us to do app rationalization. We're not going to talk too much more about it today, but if that's something that you have as a key concern, please don't hesitate to reach out and we can talk to you about what we do in the automated app rationalization space. The next part is application compatibility. Will my app work in different versions of operating systems? Will it work well? Won't it work well? Then the modernization. So Microsoft is now talking about MSIX. We've got app V packages, we've got MSI packages, and now MSIX is the new app package. How do you actually take those apps and how do you convert them to MSIX? Typically quite long, quite arduous process to do. Often people use third parties to do it. They pay them a fortune per app. Then the app comes back and we go into the next phase, testing. We now need to test the app. So we've pushed out our package, we've asked the, asked the third party or internally perhaps to update the package into the new format. We've now got it, we go, we install it, but it doesn't work. Go back to the application packages, go back to them and ask them to do it again. Get it back again, test it again. Oh, look, it works. Does it perform the same? Well, we don't really know because we haven't got any performance stats of what was before versus what it is now. So you know what? It works, it installs, seems to work well, but does it work in Windows 10 multi-session, for example? Well, we don't know. Does it work because it works better on this platform or that platform? We don't know all the problems that exist when you take a manual approach. Patching, so we started talking about patching earlier on around the, the importance to roll out patches in a rapid way. And the big challenge in rolling out packages in a rapid way is often the application versions and the applications and their readiness. So how could you, how could you roll out apps faster, sorry, how could you patch your operating systems and patch applications faster? Uh, if you've got such a manual approach, it's really difficult. So can we do that faster? And then how do we optimize it? How do we optimize it over time? And how do we ensure that we have the right app operating in the right platform? Because perhaps in the future, an app that works really well in a fat client will work better in a virtual environment. And it may work better in virtual environment A as opposed to virtual environment B. Maybe it performs better in Citrix than it does in VMware Horizon or the reverse. Or maybe it performs better in ABD. Or maybe it performs better in Windows 365 Cloud PC. How do you determine that? What do you do? All of those things make the application, the bank of organizations existence and they just go oh, just in the too hard basket until they're forced to do something because they're either way out of date, they're not compatible, the users are driving different version requirements, so out of date from a patch perspective that they're exposed and the CIO has now got parts of their body hanging out in the wind, you know, and, and who knows what will happen at that point. Well, I think we know what happens. So what if? What if what you could do is firstly automate the application, application rationalization, tick box done, that's what we can talk to you about separately for today. But what if you could then get confidence about your applications and know very, very quickly and in an automated fashion and at scale, which applications are going to be able to be modernized and which of those applications that can be modernized are Windows 10 multi-session compatible which of those, if they can be modernized, are then going to be able to leverage app attached in Windows ABD? How could you rapidly package? Imagine if you could just rapidly package those and not just package, but automate the testing as well, automate the install and an intelligent smoke test at scale. So take 100 applications, run them through an engine. Will they be able to be modernized? If so, modernize them. Now install and test them. And not only that, how about you give me the performance implications about how did they perform previously versus how do they perform now? And how do they perform now on different types of platforms? Doing all of that in an automated way and being able to do that in days as opposed to months is what Remo is going to enable. Imagine as well, if through that process, given we can do install and test, what we're now able to do at the same time is we can then test compatibility as it relates to patches. So Pete's going to take us through a whole lot of that. I'm now going to turn off my camera. I'm going to allow Pete, to give Pete the floor and, until, of course, he does something and throws me questions like he often does. And I'm going to throw it over to Pete. You're in great hands. And Pete, take us away, buddy. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, really great positioning there of, of the why and the challenge. Uh, and I'm sure most of you can agree that apps generally are a sticking point. Um, so let's introduce Remo3 here. Here's a screenshot of the cloud interface. Wanted to give you a bit of a teaser here. Um, but really, Remo3 is a cloud-based, AI-driven um, app management tool. 
So working with apps at scale, working with apps uh, to modernize them and to help you manage those apps. So what does it really help you achieve? It's about rapid assessments uh, when you're replatforming VDI. It's about taking advantage of some great benefits of the MSIX app package format, and we'll take you through some of that uh, today as well. It's about reducing product delivery time. It's about time to value and ROI. Taking apps that would normally take weeks, months to package, and doing this in weeks and, and, and days, and sometimes minutes. Uh, and automated intelligent smoke testing. We're very excited about what Remo can bring in this area and what's in the future on the roadmap. Um, but going beyond just executing the EXE and looking at the processes underneath and executing those as well. So getting apps into Intune faster, huge momentum and push from Microsoft around Intune this year. Uh, we think it's the right way to go around um, uh, device deployment, device management in this hybrid working world, having your management interface out in the cloud. And you want your apps to follow up with it and to get advantage of doing that. Essential 8, uh, maturity model compliance. If you're familiar with Essential 8 from the Australian Cybersecurity Centre, uh, patching's like number three on the list, if not number two. And at all stages in that maturity model on your cybersecurity resilience journey, they say to patch an app within 48 hours of the patch being released. Now that's very hard to do. Uh, well, very easy to do if you don't want to test. Very hard to do if you need to test your apps. And for a lot of environments, a lot of people, that has to happen. Remo can help you achieve that. Probably other couple of points around cybersecurity as well. IBM calculates it's $3.9 million for the average cost for breach. And that also there's been research into the share price drop when there is a breach and that's notified publicly. And that's an impact of up to 7% uh, uh, drop in value of, a, of the average share price for a company. And in most cases, that's over a year. And in some cases, those companies never recover that share value. So it's critically important to patch your systems on time and Remo can help you achieve that. Managing environmental change and impact. R really key definition here of Remo is not testing app cap cap compatibility. It's doing more than that. It's really um, testing your platform as well. It's looking at from a performance aspect and an environmental aspect, so you can actually see if your apps still run, if there's changes, GPOs, group policy, um, in-tune policy. Maybe you're changing the hardware profile. Maybe you're changing the actual uh, platform underneath and moving platforms from, say, AVD to Citrix or vice versa. Um, another good one is that drift over time. We know uh, apps essentially lose performance over time. We can actually measure that each time we run the tests and see what the drift is and understand where things are going and have a look under the covers and see what's happening. So all of those really roll up into four use cases. There's the migration bit, uh, readiness, the assessment on the future platform, the modernize around MSIX and the benefits of that, and the management and optimization pretty much go hand in hand. That's around evergreen management of your apps and your operating systems, whether it be patching, upgrades, or updates. So if we look here, Remo 3 really can help you across all of these solutions and services, Intune, Azure Virtual Desktop, Citrix, Windows 365, App Rationalization, Retiring SCCM going full native cloud management for your devices with Intune. Windows as a service, staying up to date with that servicing model. Essential 8 compliance from the Australian Cybersecurity Centre and Microsoft Managed Desktop. Basically anything that's touching the client, the desktop or apps, Remo can help you with. Let's jump into why MSX. It's not a hugely well-known topic and it is quite down in the weeds even for myself. Um, but let's touch on it because there's some real key things to call out here. We've talked about reducing SCCM overhead, so being able to get your apps out of SCCM, out of MSI format, into a native MSIX format for ingestion into Intune. No more Intune wrappers, no more packaging stuff, just to put a silly wrapper around it. Modern app format. MSIX is an app container. Everything runs in the container. What we, that means is we don't get the bloat, we don't get DLL hell, we don't get registry keys um, getting overwritten. It all stays in the container. Being containerized also means that it's portable. It's very easy to attach apps to your session or to your um, logon and have them there and ready for the user, but they're not actually installed. It's increased security. That container is signed, code signed with an SSL certificate, making it tamper proof. And the ability to attach apps using MSIX rather than install them means we have much cleaner and much smaller golden images. No longer do we need to install all our apps that might be used. They can just be attached with the users as we go. 
and I'll show you a quick slide on that next, but also better performance. It's demonstrable and we'll show you some data from that that we've got out of Remo 3. So just very, very quickly, app delivery versus app attach, old school ways on the left, new school ways on the right. If you're familiar with FS Logic, similar concept, abstracting uh, and virtualizing the uh, user profile so it moves with the user nice and freely, doesn't really get injected into the, um, into the session. Same with the apps, the apps can float with the user, they get attached as the user logs on and they run. They also can run from cheaper storage like Azure Files and if it's physical they can run from uh, secure storage as well. If it's a physical device, so a great way to have clean images. You can imagine if you were running a thousand machines and each image using less, you know, less uh, disk space, maybe 10, 15 gigs each, each image, it's a lot of saving on very expensive disk. Let's quickly look at the MSIX performance profile. This is a relative performance scoring of one app, one app uh, that was analyzed by Remo3. The base OS and target OS are just different versions of Windows 10, and then AVD is, is, is Azure, obviously Azure's virtual desktop. So the same app running across three different, two different OSs uh, and three different, uh, and two different platforms, I should say, we're seeing the same use, uh, performance profile between base and target. That's to be expected. In AVD, it's actually slightly higher. But once we convert that app into MSIX, we're seeing it use far less CPU, RAM, and disk. And that's down to the way the app is containerized and the way that the apps can get attached to the OS. So a clear inherent benefit straight off the bat of using MSIX. I'm going to jump to a demo now of Remo3. I'm going to stop the slideshow, but we'll look at the interface, we'll look at ingesting apps. We'll look at what it does when it does a smoke test and how we interpret the results and the conversion and how it's really taking a lot of the pain away from that process. So here's Remo3. Uh, really nice and simple to use. It's very uh, color coded. It's very quick and visual to see what's going on. On the left, we have our use cases that I talked about earlier, the migrate, the migration and the manage. Um, and here we have our apps. Now I'll just call something out. We might see here that we've had some failed. There's actually a lot of value in that. Not every app's going to convert automatically. Okay, and that's one thing that Remo can do. Automatically convert apps into MSIX format for you. But the value is knowing fast. So you could throw 100 apps at Remo and have come back over uh, the next day overnight, it's been running overnight, and actually know where you sit. If you're doing that manually with labor, whether it be one, two or three people, it would take a long time. Take hours per application. Takes about 25 minutes with Remo 3. So I'm going to use Mozilla Firefox as my example here and show you some of the interface and show you some of the uh, smoke tests. So here we have Mozilla Firefox, known to all, um, sort of superseded by Chrome nowadays, but I, I do still use it and I'm running it today. So I ingested this app and it was as simple as going add a package and going upload. You simply need to put your MSI files into a zip. Windows it's simple, right click, go add to zip. Drag them into here and Remo will discover everything about it. It will discover all the relevant strings, arguments, exes in the package, the exit codes. It will discover all of that for you and understand what is in that package. The next thing it does is kicks off and starts testing straight away. It will test against the current OS and the target OS. And for this one, I'm using the cloud version. There is an on-prem version. I'll talk to that after the demo. But we can set what the uh, current and target OS or operating systems are. So let's look at the test result. Now, if you've ever done any app packaging, you'll understand that it's quite hard to understand what's happening at the time that a package installs or runs. The logs are hard. SSM logs are um, uh, very troublesome at best, even with some good log passing tools. It's hard to understand and pick through what's going on. Remo3 logs all the operations to a log file that's easy to read. The other thing is it does is it actually does a capture of performance. So we can see the CPU and the memory and the network elapsed time and all sorts of things uh, through that. And it does it for each stage. At the smoke test, I can see that it's really using the network and it's running for a certain amount of time. Another thing with packaging apps is proving that you actually installed it and it's running. A lot of companies will want proof that it did execute. Remo3 grabs the screen capture of the app running. It even goes even further and actually does a video. So I'll just fast forward through this uh, for the purpose of the demo, but we'll see here once it loads up that we'll have a picture of the icon on the desktop. If I fast forward through a bit, it's gonna 
splash up Firefox, and there it goes. Now, what is it actually doing at that time? Not only is it just running the EXE, it's actually executing every process attached to that EXE as well. So it's going beyond a simple um, executable smoke test and doing an intelligent smoke test, looking at the EXE, unpacking all the processes underneath. Let's look at one that failed. Now, after I ingested it and it's power, passed its test, Remo3 goes and then converts the app into MSIX. So you see here, this is MSI. This is in the new MSIX format, but it's actually failed. Let's have a look and see what's happening. Now we have a look, we actually see that it restored the computer, it installed Mozilla, and it did pass the smoke test, but you'll see it added an extra test here under the MSIX package. So we get the same great insights, we can see the performance. We actually see it took longer to run, this, uh, slightly shorter to run the smoke test, but to install it, it actually took longer. If you noted before, it actually said, oh, don't know, I'm not getting a data there. It actually said 43 seconds and it's taking longer to install it on AVD. But we have this failed test. Now let's look at the console. We get the full error message and we can see what's happening. Now if I go back to the package, let's let it load here, and I click here, we'll see that the name that it was actually listing was this um, uh, setup agent, sorry, the maintenance agent. We don't actually need that to run, so I've unticked it. Next time I run that package as an MSIX, that won't be executed as part of the test, and the package will, will run. The reason it's failed is it's a maintenance service. It's attempting to go out to the internet uh, and update Firefox, and we're not connected to the internet in our test environment. So let's look what else it can do. Really what it's about, is, as I said, it's at, at scale and giving you insights. So if we look at the AVD suitability as a, as a check, and remember, your current target OS is defined by you. If you wanted that to be uh, Citrix on-prem or uh, any video instance anywhere, you can run Remo3 against that. Let's look at an app here. This is Content Manager. be familiar to a lot of people, uh, also known as HP Trim. Now, it's run the same tests um, and converted it to MSIX, and it's actually ready for AVD. Now, we don't actually have to think about this too hard. We can see some here it's converted but it wasn't suitable. This one has converted and it's ready. It's actually tested this app running against a real Azure Virtual Desktop instance and doing a check for multi-session. So if I click here, I get that same uh, results window. I get the same log and we'll see here it's running Windows 10 multi-session. So there's actually logging multiple people onto that VM at one time and making sure the app still works. We get the same stats around the performance. So back here, we can simply start filtering these things too. The, the interface is actually interactive. So if I want to see all the ones that work and are ready, I can just filter it with this bar here. Pretty neat. So we're getting conversion rate and readiness rate of 89% of our apps. Uh, one thing that Remo3 does is actually go through and apply shims and fixes uh, through their knowledge of packaging apps to make apps work. Uh, so you get a very high conversion rate, much higher than if you're using native tools from Microsoft. Let's have a quick look under the covers and see what's actually happening and how long it takes to sequence things or how long does it take from discovering of an app to running through the tests. Now just remember, this is running multiple, multiple tests. It's running it on the source, target, uh, as AVD as an MSI, then converting the package to MSIX and running it again as, as um, on that AVD instance. So let's have a look at Content Manager. So I imported it at uh, 10 o'clock. Okay, and at 10.08 it started the smoke test, then modernized the apps roughly 10 minutes later, did all the smoke tests again. So within half an hour of finishing at 10.31, I had run it and converted it and tested against, got a whole performance baseline, got everything. Pretty impressive. A couple of things I'll show you, then we'll, we'll end the demo, but you can see how simple it is. We've got exports here. It'll export all the information out in the console and more. And there's also an API you can hit programmatically both control Remo3 and pull down all this data and stats. Um, one thing you can do with apps is actually chain them. If you had an app dependent on another app, you can go down here and add a dependency. So you can make sure this app runs when the other one's executing. So you might have apps that need, it, need each other. You can do that with Remo. You can also start tagging apps. Maybe you just want to run a test run with just the HR apps. Just start tagging them with HR, and you can say, hey, I just want to run the HR apps. Um, another thing that you can also do, 
is with those dependencies, now you can get a bit clever. If you've got a robotic process automation tool, RPA tool, maybe it's Power Automate Desktop, which is free from Microsoft, Autotask, or a bunch of others, that dependent app can be the RPA. So you could write a routine that does your user acceptance testing, right? So they're generally screen recorders, macro recorder type RPA uh, bots. So you could record the actual test in your app, chain it as a dependent process or EXE to run as far as this test goes, and then it'll run up Firefox and then run your UAT test, which maybe goes onto one of your line of business apps that runs in a browser and clicks wherever it needs to click as part of the test. So you can extend this platform well into user acceptance testing beyond smoke testing. So you can see if we can package, oh, sorry, discover, test, package, and test again, an app in half an hour, we can get a lot of apps done in a day, uh, and we can find out very, very quickly where we stand and what needs still remediation manually and what's ready to go. Um, so you pair that with the app rationalization, we can figure out what's the sort of 80-20 rule. If I get 20% of apps, I can deploy to 80% of people, run all those through Remo, have your result back in a day or two, do the remediation on the ones that don't convert, and then you're ready to go. You're off, you can start modernizing. So it really is shortening it from months down to weeks, if not days. I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna jump back to the presentation. Quickly explain the architecture for you. So there's, when you buy Remo3, you get two versions to deploy, really. You get the cloud version, which is on the left, and you get the on-prem version on the right. Now, why would you want an on-prem version? A couple of things. One is it can automatically ingest your apps into SCCM. Two is that you can run it against your real environment. And this is where that evergreen part comes in. If you want to test the change of a GPO, uh, test the change of your gold image, well, then you can run what we call the task runners, which is essentially your machine running the Remo3 agent, and it will execute all the tasks against it. Um, with the cloud version, it really runs it against generic instances of those operating systems and also um, Azure Virtual Desktop. So with, by deploying it both ways, you can actually get at looking at your current environment and you know, I guess that future state for cloud readiness. Now, coming up in Remo soon, you'll be able to uh, also natively from the cloud attach back to other Azure, Virtual, uh, Azure instances or Azure tenants. And if you have uh, machines running there, you can test against that, not, not needing any deployment on the customer network. Really, it's the flexibility of deployment that lets you get the outcome you need and test it against the environments that you're actually really running. Um, let's quickly jump to the product tiers. So what does it look like? At the lower end, beginner and base camp, they're really looking at um, suitability. So beginner itself is really priced per app and it's a 30 day license. So you're looking at the assessment. It's typically used when you're looking at Azure Virtual Desktop. Base camp's for the smaller end of town. It's a 12 month subscription. So not only do you get the time to do your project, if it's an uplift or a replatform, but you also get the time to do that evergreen servicing model and patch testing. Now, I'll just quickly touch on patch testing. You might go, well, how do I test my patches in Remo? The idea is that you patch the machine that it's running against and then run all your apps against it to test the impact rather than packaging your patch and applying that. So hopefully that's a, just a key differentiation there or a key, key understanding about how that works. Um, South Face Summit one to five. These are 12 month subscriptions. These are really around the evergreen management and that forward view of AVD suitability and the conversion to MSIX. Uh, with South Face, you don't get the ability to download the MSIX package that it converts. You can pay for that per app if you like. Um, and in some cases, it's just cheaper to buy Summit one to five, which have MSIX conversion inbuilt. Uh, you can get the ability to download it. So that's included in the subscription. So something for everybody there, um, really Summit 2 to 5, they just step up in um, increments of how many apps you have. Now a key point to make clear here is that with your um, uh, with, with Remo 3, you pay per app or you pay for how many apps you have, the high watermark. If you add an app, like a new version, just take the old one out, you'll still have as many apps as you, you have. The other thing to make really clear is it's not paid on test runs. If you want to run the tests every day, you can go for it. So uh, if you think of it that way, you can test any environmental change anytime you need to and get an understanding. Uh, so lots and lots of um, return on investment there. <clears throat> now, when you buy Remo3, there's a service inclusion. Um, so we can do it for you. Um, 
and since you can come in, do a monthly test of your critical apps, do that biannual OS update check, do the performance baseline and give you a great interactive report every month about how your apps are drifting in the performance change or if they're still suitable and still running. Uh, there's also that the built-in assessment for ABD uh, and if you add any apps, we'll give you the MSIX package. That's included in the price. We won't go through pricing today, but it is included in the, in the, in the solution. Let's quickly touch on ROI. Now, this is just a, a basic one, and I was trying to show you one with a with a thousand apps. But this is a run through with some variables, and it would it would depend on your situation. But at the moment, this is an ROI, and if I had 200 apps, okay, 200 apps with a monthly rate of change of 10%. So 20 apps have updates, or operating systems have updates. Um, it bases it on how much effort would require if you had to do these apps yourself, test every app thoroughly. That you had a certain rate of complexity in your apps uh, that required a lot more time and effort than just running it through. So just by doing a project, uh, maybe you're doing moving to Azure Virtual Desktop, we think you could save 1,500 hours by using Remo 3, even with the manual effort required for apps that didn't convert. But if you also use that for app management, that evergreen statement around patch testing and the like, you'd get all your money back. Now, it's a platform that deals with scale. If you had 1,000 apps, that ROI turns into something like 400%. So getting your value and time to value, yes, not only that, a great return on investment. To even get 100% is pretty awesome for a tool like that. Um, from there, I think we can just quickly look at Remo3's credentials, um, and then I'll let Ronnie wrap up. So who's Remo3? Look, they have a rich history in apps. They've developed a number of solutions around apps. One of the previously done AppDNA and a few others. So there's huge expertise in app testing and app packaging. They're a Citrix Ready partner, they're an AVD solution partner, and they're a VMware TAP partner. So selling, if you need assistance uh, to help get it up there, then look, they are ready for um, Azure Marketplace, ESA funding from Microsoft, and also recently announced the Azure App Program, the Azure application, uh, sorry, Azure Modern Modernization Migration Program, where there's funding available for customers to dip their toe in the water and try things. So you can use Remo3 as a proof of value approach to see if you can adopt Azure Virtual Desktop. So lots of ways to get started and get running up with Remo. The other thing I'll say is I'm more than happy to do a demo individually to anybody. Uh, and if you're really, really keen past that, we can look at getting you a trial instance to play with yourself. Hopefully that's been useful and giving you an insight uh, about Remo3 and what it can do. It can do lots and can help in lots and lots of ways. Um, and hopefully you've seen how simple it is and easy it is to use and, and operate. So thanks for your time. Fantastic, Pete. Thanks very much. Uh, as you can hopefully see through the uh, the, take, the, the run through that Pete gave you and the demonstration that you see of the platform, it actually is very, very simple and straightforward and highly automates and takes away all of those pains that I was talking about at the beginning around the application, be it upgrades, be it changes, PDF even my muting, it'd be it changes into different um, SCCMs in tune, or if you're moving virtual platforms into AVD, what was WVD, or Cloud PC, or Horizon View, or Citrix VDAG, whichever one it might be, you can see that, I should say. Um, you could absolutely see where Remo might be able to, to, to play a part and play a role for you and make things a whole lot faster. Particularly again, you know, touching on that ASD Essential 8, it doesn't matter whether it's ASD Essential 8 or if it's NIST or if it's another type of security standard that you're um, looking to comply with or if it's in, you know, standards within your industry, then Remo 3 has a very, very solid play in there as well. So you can kind of drop into Remo at varying times. You don't have to be doing a modernization strategy or a modernization project or program of work to leverage Remo. You can simply leverage Remo just in the uh, packaging, in the testing side of things for patches, for example. So quite versatile, solves for some significant pain points that exist that I know that all of you had, some of you who are on the call, I, I know, and I know you were going through projects like this and we've already spoken about Remo, thanks for joining. Um, and for those of you who are looking at Remo and wondering how it's gonna form part, hopefully now you've got a great understanding. Um, of course, we'll be doing exactly what you expect us to do and sending you follow-up mails and seeking to schedule time. If you want to schedule a time with Pete directly, you can simply go to our homepage on our website. You'll see a big banner there around application and the application revolution. 
click on that and down the bottom you'll be able to schedule directly into Pete's calendar. Um, so he's always someone that people want to get time with. So I'd encourage you to take some time and, and schedule some time with Pete. Um, he's often back to back with his meetings because so many people want a piece of his time. So thanks very much for taking the time out of your day today to join us on the webinar. I know a bunch of you will have registered for the webinar and uh, decide to watch it later. I'm kind of one of those people too. So if you're watching this later and you've uh, made it to the end of this with us, which no doubt you have, uh, thanks for taking the time and don't hesitate to reach out. We'll be reaching out to you. And uh, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your days and weeks ahead. Thanks very much.